Hello everyone, today we are going to go over Maximum Product Subarray uh, today in C++ and focusing over on the line 75. So before we get started, I am just going to create our formulated questions that we need to ask ourselves. We have the input, what data structure slash algorithm slash technique we're going to use, um, what are we going to do with the data, and then what is our output. So to answer the questions, given an integer array of nums, find a subarray uh, that has the largest product and return the product. Uh, the test cases are generated so that the answer will fit a 32-bit integer. So we have an input that we have uh, given array. And uh, the technique I will explain later uh, over what we are going to do because both the technique and what we're going to do with the data are pretty standard hand in hand. And then we our output is going to be the maximum product of the sub array. So overall, what we uh, will be doing in terms of this entire uh, problem, and just but prior to, uh, just looking at the input and output, the input that we have is an array of nums to start with, and the output is 6. The reason being is because after scanning every single possible subarray to start with, the exp um, 2 and 3 happen to be the highest relative to 3 and 2 and then uh, negative 2 and 4 uh, to start when comparing all the rest of the numbers all together. And then we can also have an edge case at the same time uh, as well. So given that we have uh, negative 2 and negative 1, the result cannot be 2 because negative two and negative one is not a subarray, so they all have to be connected one way or another. So we know the relationship as a result from coming from set examples. And the technique that we are going to focus on is not gonna be a data structure to start with. Uh, it's going to be uh, focusing on the STL library in C++, so we're gonna do a swap and um, max technique. where these methods are from the STL library where we're able to swap some of the um, variables that we're going to uh, initialize first, then we are going to loop through our array. So what we are going to do is that we will initialize our min, max, and answer uh, relative to the index of the uh, array given array and while we are scanning through the array we have to uh, take in mind of some edge cases because as highlighted in the example we will have negative numbers to start with and the constraints uh, given the fact that numbers of i will range from negative 10 all the way to 10 uh, consider negative numbers. That is why we're going to use the swap, but really our main uh, technique is going to be the max uh, to begin. Edge case of negative numbers. And then what we are going to do is also max and min makes for ration and swap for edge case. Okay, so overall, the technique that we're going to actually focus on is uh, focusing on re uh, redeclaration uh, from the STL library. We're going to redeclare our um, initialized variables first uh, for both the max and the mem as they are going through the rest of the array because we have to consider all other possibilities when we are scanning through the array. We will declare the min and max products accordingly, and the product means to multiply. All right, so now just be able to go through the rest over what we have done. Uh, okay, so for step one, in terms of a product, we're going to initialize, and I that is. <laughs> One, two, two A, two B, two 
Let's see. Just some following notes that we already have over here to start with. Just be able to state everything. So first we're going to declare our max product answer nums zero. That's the first index of our given array. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing for the max and the min. Max product, min product. The reason why we initialize it this way is because we have to have our given array uh, relative to the number of indices at the same time. And now we're going to start scanning. And, and typically for arrays, we're going to go with a for loop. And but the way we declare our for loop is going to be starting at one. Because one, a subarray is going to need at least two indices to begin with. So we have to start at least at one uh, to start with to be able to get all the elements needed for our subarrays whenever we are scanning. Um, okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to take into consideration of some edge cases. And so we have to take into consideration of the possibility of one of the indices being negative because it's one of our constraints over here. So nums of i. If nums of i is less than zero, then what we're going to do is that we're going to call upon a swap between the current, um, sorry, between the uh, min uh, max product and then the min product accordingly. Because we have to take into consideration of all possible negative numbers at the same time, and this would actually shift over because if we have a negative six, for instance, and negative three, and we don't have the swap, it's going to take into consideration, it won't take into consideration that negative six is gonna be less than negative three, which is why we perform this at the same time. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a re -liberation. And what we will do is that we're gonna declare, redeclare our uh, min product. It's gonna be min of uh, nums of i relative to the uh, min product times nums of i. We're comparing these two ultimately to decide exactly what's going to be the minimum. And then we will also do the same thing for our maximum for our max product as listed above over here. Max nums max product. And then finally, what we were going to do for our for loop is that we will then have our max product answer, which would then be just the uh, max of the of both the product answer and then the max product ultimately. So we have to decide in particular, make a comparison throughout the rest of the array that we are scanning through if the max product answer is uh, higher than our given max product, because if it's not, then it's going to go back inside of the for loop and then make some further uh, comparisons and redeclarations between our min and max product as well, ultimately to decide, okay, this is what our maximum product is going to be. And then finally, we can return our uh, max product answer. want to make sure I got everything already set up in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, both the test cases already pass. We'll submit and here we go. So overall, just to give a rundown on how the whole uh, how our solution works is that our solution runs in uh, constant time, given the fact that one, we have an array and n represents the size of the array. And um, given the fact it's constant, the uh, time complexity of our given solution is going to be uh, with respect to the size of array. So the longer the array, the longer uh, time it's going to take for our solution. And then in terms of space complexity, given the fact that one, we aren't calling upon any data structure to be able to actually use or uh, store anything whatsoever. So our space complexity is going to be linear O of one. And uh, this is a pretty optimal solution uh, at the same time. 
And yeah, thanks again. This was uh, Max Product uh, Subarray. If you have any questions or any comments below, uh, feel free to put them in the comment section. And if you like this as well, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, take care. Cheers. Thank you.